Hi everybody, I'm Darren Moore and you're watching Reggae Boys Commentary. This video is brought to you by MPEC Printery, specializing in t-shirt printing, posters and shipping from the USA. Call 876-775-6692 or 876-337-7374. Andy Gone Nuts, 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mmm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. This video is also brought to you by BLC Jamaica Security Electronics. Specializing in alarm system, video surveillance, camera system or CCTV, barrier system, gate automation and access control. Call 876-320-7711. That's 876-320-7711 or 876-351-1105. That's 876-351-1105. Hello everyone. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Me llamo Simón y bienvenidos a Reggae Boys Commentary. Hello everybody. My name is Simon Preston and welcome back to Reggae Boys Commentary. This is the channel where we come together to discuss everything about Jamaican football. It's a Thursday evening and you guys know exactly what that means, right? Yep, that's right. Thursday evening and this is where we get into the gist of things. So, how has everybody day been so far? How has the day been for everybody? Has it been smooth? Has it been calm? I'm intrigued to hear what you guys have to say as it relates to everything, really. Are you guys excited for the new year? Are you guys looking forward to see what lies ahead? Well, I'm curious. I'm curious about it. And hopefully, you guys have some interesting points. So, yeah. Well, 2026. That's in another three and a half years in terms of the actual World Cup itself. So, why should we be excited as Jamaicans? Well, I'll tell you the exact reasons why in particular. I'll tell you why, specifically. Eagle Republic says, congratulations to Blair Turgot and BK Hacken. Yeah, yeah, they won the the top flight league in Sweden, and they're champions, and they'll be playing in the UEFA Champions League next season. I think he deserves it. That's Blair Turgot. He tremendously deserves it. I remember when he was at West Ham, played in the FA Cup, and when he was on, at Bradford, Colchester United in League One, Dagen in, in, in League Two, played with Bromley in the National League, and then you know went over to... Ustason and then now BK Hacken. Blair Turgot, he deserves every piece of success that is coming his way. And I mean it. He really, really does. So you guys might be saying, well, why are we talking about... Why do I have this big map in front of me? Well, I'm going to show you specifically why, as Jamaicans, we should be giddy about the next tournament. So let's start with the United States, shall we? The host venues have been announced for the 2026 World Cup. And these are the venues... In the West, Western part of the three countries, three countries, USA, Canada, Mexico, Guadalajara in Mexico, Los Angeles in the United States, San Francisco in the United States, Seattle, obviously within the United States, and Vancouver in Canada. The central areas, Atlanta, it's weird that they call it central, it's more East Coast, but all right. 
Dallas, Houston, Kansas, Monterrey, Mexico City. Cool breeze, right? East Coast now. That's where things get interesting. Miami, New York, New Jersey, Philly, Boston, Toronto. So let me give you guys a bit of a map, right? This is East Coast of the United States. All of this right here, East Coast. All of this, East Coast, East Coast. All of this right here, East Coast, East Coast, East Coast, East Coast. And I'm going to explain why this is so important. Really look at that. So this is what we're going to do right now. I'm going to show you exactly why there should be reason for optimism. Why we should look at this and be quite giddy. So folks, there are over a million Jamaicans living in the United States, the United States right, right now. And if you look at it by state, there's 300,000 Jamaicans living in New York, 300,000 in Florida, 67,000 in Georgia, 67,000 in New Jersey, 56,000 in Connecticut, 40,000 in Maryland, 39,000 in Pennsylvania, 38,000 in Texas, 36,000 in Massachusetts, and 36,000 in California. Those 10 states are the largest Jamaican populations. You know, Boston is in Massachusetts right there, right? Good. So you guys know exactly where I'm going with this. All right, let's continue. Miami is a host. Miami is right here. You guys see where Miami is? All right. You guys see Miami and you guys see Jamaica? Right. You see how close Miami is to Jamaica? Good. Extremely close. And Miami and Florida, by extension, is like Kingston 21. All of this, we'll just call all of this Jamaica. All right? We'll just call all of this area Jamaica. Let's go up a little more to Georgia in Atlanta. What a place. Because right there, this already is another little Jamaica. Yeah? Let's go up a little more, shall we? New York, New Jersey. New York, New Jersey, yeah? This area. This area right here? Yeah. Jamaican contingency. Pennsylvania, Philly? Right here, Jamaican contingency. Yeah? Boston, Massachusetts. Massachusetts, where are you? There you go. There's Massachusetts. Right here. And Boston is over here. Right? Jamaican contingency there. We don't get to Canada yet. But all of this right there, East Coast, let me include, include Toronto, all right? Because in Canada, you have about half a million Jamaicans living in the entire ca in Canada. 250,000 in Ontario, 17,000 in Alberta, 14,000 in Quebec, 10,500 in British Columbia, 4,500 in Manitoba, Manitoba, 2,250 in Saskatchewan, 2,000 in Nova Scotia, 750 Jamaicans in New Brunswick, 395 in Newfoundland and Labrador, 155 in Prince Edward Island, 120 in the Northwest Territories, 35 in Nunavut. Yes, you have Jamaicans in Nunavut. I personally know a family of Jamaicans living in Nunavut, and 90 located in Yukon. You guys get my drift? You guys get my drift of exactly where I'm going, where this is concerned? Well, I certainly hope you do, because everything I've said right now is absolute facts. All of this right here, all of this right here is every reason to get giddy. You know why? Because if Jamaica qualifies for the next World Cup and their base camp or any one of their games is in this region, you know what that means, right? You know that Jamaica is going to fill up the stadium. You know that it's going to be a home game. You know that Jamaica is going to dominate this area. You know that it's going to be mayhem in this area, right? This area right here. Anything east coast of the United States, we have that luck, luck, luck. Luck, 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 luck. Not even God's man can talk to me. Luck, luck, luck. Everything East Coast in the United States is every reason for optimism and excitement. 
Ian Campbell, hope you're doing well, my friend. Florida with Miami. Atlanta in Georgia. New York, New Jersey. Philly, Boston, and Toronto is right here. You guys know what that means? I'm sure everybody watching this video right now have a family member, a brethren, or a sisterin in one of these places I've just mentioned. I'm confident of that right now. Everybody watching this video right now, I know for a fact you're a family member living in Florida. All right, if it's not Florida, then it's Atlanta. Fine, if it's not Atlanta, then it's Philly. All right, if it's not Philly, it's, it's New York. If it's not New York, it's New Jersey. And if it's not one of them places, then it's Toronto. If I'm not Toronto, fine, or Boston. Everybody know at least one person in these areas because this is where we go. This is where we went to rebuild the United States. This is where Jamaicans went to rebuild Canada. This is where Jamaicans have found and developed and nurtured and improved facilities, life, culture, technology, all industries Jamaica have had, Jamaicans have had an impact within the North American region. I'm telling you guys right now, that is exactly how it is. And guess what? You have 4,400 Jamaicans living in Mexico. That's right. That's right. You have 4,000 Jamaicans currently living within Mexico. So, there's a place called Veracruz, right? Called Veracruz, right here, right this area. This area in particular, Veracruz. See it here? Veracruz. As you can see, it's very close to the coastal area. Veracruz is where you have the population of Jamaicans. Veracruz, right here in particular, has a Jamaican contingency. Yes, it might not be close to one of the stadiums because Mexico City is over here. And Monterey is up here, so. Monterey is up here. Yeah, you see the high mountains, guys? Yeah. High altitude, I tell you. But you guys get the drift. You guys know exactly what I'm referring to here. So this shows you everything that you need. It shows everything, and I hope you're able to see exactly what I'm talking about here. West Coast. Yes, you do have some Jamaicans in Vancouver, a handful in Seattle. Yeah, you do have Jamaicans in California. But I'm telling you right now, just think about it, folks. Think about the corporate support of Jamaican businesses within these areas. Florida, Georgia, New York, New Jersey, Boston, Toronto. Just process that for a moment. That gives you, that should give you every ounce of optimism, hope that there are great things on the horizon. That should inspire you. That should give you everything that you need to say, listen, we have to go there. Can you imagine, folks, you can wake up, literally wake up one morning and say, you know, someone want to catch a World Cup game. And you go, no, man, manly. Or you go, Donald Sanks, and go, so, And then you go land, land here. So you go land here. So welcome to Fort Lauderdale or welcome to Miami. You see what I'm saying, people? You guys get it? That's every reason why we should be excited. So we'll land them of a road that go all the way to Key West. What is what you're not saying to me? Them of a road that go all the way to Key West. That is interesting. There is a road that goes all the way to Key West. Interessante. Hmm. Oui, c'est différent. Oui, je sais, c'est magnifique, mais c'est longtemps pour conduire en voiture aux États-Unis. So, basically, folks, just, just process it. Let's think about this for a moment, yeah? minus the long drive and everything of that nature. Hmm. There's some interesting 
land in Florida that I didn't even realize, you know. But I see your comments, guys, and I'll be coming to it quite soon. Fort Lauderdale, Boca, West Palm Beach, Port St. Lucie, Okeechobee. And then you go up north, you go up north, you go you're into Melbourne, and you got Orlando. And Tampa is that side. And then you go up, you go up, you go up, you go up, you go up. And you end up in Jacksonville. And then you end up in a new state. And just like that. And you're in Georgia. Yeah, folks. So I want you to bear this in mind that if Jamaica qualifies for 2026, everything is in Jamaica's favor to succeed. Everything. Because the majority of the host venues already are situated in areas with a nice Jamaican contingency. They're already in areas for those persons that are on the island. They might not necessarily need to go and book a hotel in that area. But you know what they might be able to do? Well, they might be able to say, okay, hmm, what we can do here is, okay, do this in a scenario where I have a family member that live in Maryland, yeah? So me personally, I can say, ah, cool. I have family members that live in the state of Maryland. And you know, I have a game of Philly. They make up a game of Philly. Jump in the car or jump on the plane. Welcome to Philadelphia. I say, all right, Jamaica's next game is, is a Harrison... Um, Red Bull Arena. So, okay, cool. Welcome to JFK. And then we hear, so, oh, game at Toronto. Soup. Welcome to Toronto. Bienvenue à, to à Toronto, à Canada. Et bienvenue à notre pays. C'est le pays pour le français et les anglais et pour le Coupe du Monde 2026. Bienvenue to the mont. Attention, c'est parti. Brilliant. Brilliant right there. So, so my people, my fellow Jamaicans, I'm telling you guys from now, sort out that US visa. Sort out that Canadian visa. With a Jamaican passport, you don't need a visa for go Mexico. So I'm telling you guys, sort out that US visa. Sort out that Canadian visa. When I have three and a half years for plan and prepare the thing. May I tell you no? May I tell you from no? Ryan LFC, may I talk to you, brother? Sort out the thing. Sort out the thing, brother. Sort out the thing. JD, may I talk to you, brother? Sort out the thing. Sort out the thing, brother. J Taylor, sort out the thing. Sort out the thing, brother. You guys must not must ensure that in your passport book you have the US Canadian visas so in that blue book you must have those two visas in fact there's three visas that you must never ever 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 live without that's the US Canadian and UK visa three visas that you can never ever ever live without all right I hope you guys take this seriously because this is incredibly important. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot go without those three visas. It's imperative, folks. All right? So come on. You guys can do it. Okay? Make sure. Make sure. So yeah, let's see what you guys have to say. Ayas Ab says, what's up, bro? Hopefully you are good. I'm doing well, thanks. I'm doing good, thanks. And I hope you guys are also doing well, thanks. And are just as excited and giddy 
as I am in relation to the World Cup itself. Omzo said, would be nice to have wins on lock, though. Yeah, that's true. Connecticut has a huge Jamaican community, says Omzo. Yeah, you're right. Connecticut right here. There we go. This is Connecticut. Right here. Oh, that's Hartford. Boston is up here. Hmm. That's interesting with Vermont. Maine is all the way here. Hmm. And then in come this part of the world now. Centrally. Let's say even if Jamaica has a game in Kansas. Yeah. That's not bad in the grand scheme of things. It's not bad. Whether it's Wichita or 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 Garden City, we'll find our way. Or Selena. We'll find a way. We'll find a way to make it happen. B Doctor says trust. I live in Connecticut. Only if Jamaica gets a game anywhere close to that region, it's gonna be a while with Jamaica. Mr. Douglas, anything East Coast in the United States of America? means party if jamaica's host if jamaica's base city is located in east coast usa meaning if jamaica's home base training camp is miami atlanta new york new jersey philly boston toronto then that is every reason for optimism. You know why? Because it is very, very simple in terms of travel on the East Coast. West Coast, you're going through a different time zone, longer travel as well, because coast to coast, you're talking three, four, five, six hours of travel, depending on where you're coming from specifically. New York to Philly, that's nothing in an airplane. Fort Lauderdale to New York, hour and a half, two hours and change. That's not bad. That's not bad. Kingston to Toronto, three and a half hours, three hours, 54 minutes. That's not bad. Kingston to Miami, hour, 55 minutes, well, hour, 40 minutes. That's not bad. Kingston to New York, three hours and 50 minutes. That's not bad. Kingston to Atlanta, two hours and change. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And there are also plans as well to ensure that there's a travel route from Montego Bay to Los Angeles, California. Now, wouldn't that be exciting? I know that everyone would be quite thrilled with the prospect of that, wouldn't it? Sean3679 says, big up, Simon, big up. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Sean says, greeting from Suriname. Big up, bro. Hartford, Connecticut as the third biggest Jamaican community in America. Yeah, based on data, it says New York and Florida. Jamaica and Suriname will represent the Caribbean. In 2026... If Suriname and Jamaica meet, make it to the World Cup, oh, that would be some party. That would be some party, you know? Honestly, that would be every, every single reason to, to get up. You know what I'm saying? That is every single, that's the, the best thing, I would say. So, hopefully you guys can see that. So, yeah. (laughs) 
But how do you guys feel? I'm interested to hear how you guys feel. Is it optimism? Is it concern? Is it euphoria? Is it, like, is it elation? Let's hear what you guys have to say. I'm ready. Question is, are you ready? US, US1 to QS, yeah. Will the qualification system be the same as the last qualification system? The president of Kankaka, Victor Montagliani, says it's highly likely that the process would change. Highly likely that it wouldn't be a eight-team final round. It wouldn't be an octagon. It might be back to the hex, where the top three teams advance and the fourth and fifth place team head to the, the playoffs. Jamaicans commute via road and support reggae boys on the East Coast. New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and also Maryland and Georgia. You're right, Tom Plow. Si Island cards of Simon. Will Conquer will increase with more spots? And how much will there be as well? Yes, so as you guys know, US, Canada, Mexico are automatic. So what that means now is that the top three teams in the World Cup qualifiers for CONCACAF will book their tickets automatically towards the next World Cup. In addition to that, the teams that finish fourth and fifth will head to the intercontinental playoffs. So they'll head to the playoffs. It's going to be a six-team intercontinental playoffs. Another six teams, two will qualify for the World Cup. So if you need, if you need a further clarification on that, do let me know. And I will break that down for you. Yeah, three direct and two playoff tickets. Yeah. Cameron Aguirre says, because it's the USA, they have lots of immigrants, so families of people not from the USA can stay with the family. Yes, you're right. Aguero! I remember that moment. Wait. Yeah, I got the Martin Tyler coverage. Okay, Sean Bells, thank you for the information. Any more new players for Suriname? Let us know, Sean. Keep us posted. Because I'm going to, if New Zealand and Jamaica qualify, I'm going to see if New Zealand and Jamaica qualify. That's what you're saying? Please clarify what you're trying to say so that I can understand what you are saying clearly on this matter in particular. So let's see what you guys are saying. Cameron Aguirre says, what is somehow Jamaica get to the host the FIFA World Cup? What are the top two stadiums will be in contention for the final? If Jamaica gets to host a World Cup, then the National Stadium and the Montego Bay Sports Complex. But I don't think Jamaica will host a senior World Cup. I think Jamaica will host an under-17 World Cup. I think Jamaica can host a beach soccer World Cup. I do think Jamaica can host a futsal World Cup, but I don't think Jamaica can host a senior World Cup. I just think logistically, bringing 32 teams here will present its challenges. So a senior World Cup, I don't see it. But an under-17 World Cup, I do think that's realistic. I do think that's realistic. I think that's something that can happen. The event is for good night, Simon. Those players, what your interview, are looking about their passports. You're talking about the ones that I did in England. You want an update on those. Yeah, all of them have minimum started the process. We need to play in Copa from our match practice, says Patrick Riley. So 2023, Jamaica has the CONCACAF Nations League, the CONCACAF Gold Cup, and there'll be a sprinkle of international windows that can and should be used for games in relation to games like friendlies. 2024 will be the... Nations League again, and also Copa America. Now, it's not been confirmed as yet that Jamaica will be invited to the Copa America tournament. However, one can expect an invitation. Armin Aguero says, I'm going to buy a ticket 
of New Zealand and Jamaica both qualify. Okay. Okay. Understand. I understand exactly what you mean. Fully understood. If a big if my country, Somalia, and Minnesota will come out. So you're saying that there's a large Somalian diaspora in the state of Minnesota? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 12 new players coming for Suriname. Would you look at that? Suriname, Curacao, St. Lucia, Grenada, St. Vincent, Antigua, Dominica, St. Kitts, Guyana, Trinidad. All of those countries that I've named just a while ago, including the Dominican Republic and Haiti, have already started the process for paperwork in relation to getting passports for these players to represent their country. Nobody's making this opportunity slip. How's the striker from Union Berlin going? Yeah. Lightning up the Bundesliga. Quarter did it. And Minnesota followed by Ohio. Oh, for the Somalian population. Um, isn't there a Somalian diaspora as well in New York, New Jersey as well? I'm pretty sure that that's also has a decent contingency as well, bearing in mind what New York is as a state. Devon Smith says, beautiful, Simon. Yeah, wonderful. Absolutely, it is great news. As far as who is the first that, that will get his passport, Cameron Eubank will be the first in the new year. As you can imagine, tomorrow will be the last work day. Although work will still continue at these offices next week and the week after, because of the public, because of the holidays, offices will be closed. So anything that you're trying to do or accomplish, it should honestly be accomplished tomorrow. Him and the American striker seem to be doing well, Sean. Yeah, you know. Good news, eh? So, yeah. What would you give for Jamaica? What are you in the World Cup? In terms of how far Jamaica would go? Listen. If Jamaica qualifies for the World Cup, Jamaica is going to the round of 16. I said it, the round of 16. When you have that level of 12th man, when you have an entire East Coast behind you, look, momentum alone can carry the Jamaicans far in this competition. We're already, it's going to feel like playing at home. This will not happen in another lifetime for this generation of players. I remember the last World Cup on North American soil was 1994. 94, 98, 02, 06, 10, 14, 18, 22. That's seven World Cups. Thirty-two years. So thirty-two years time, the next tournament. Jesus, I'm gonna be old. You guys get my drift. The Leon Baileys, the Ravel Morrisons, the Damien Lowe's, the Andre Blakes. This will be Jamaica's best chance.
to leave a mark at her World Cup 2026. The absolute best chance. Conditions in our favor. 12th man in our favor. In our backyard. Literally. Literally. We will feel at home. Nobody can question that. What would you do for Jamaica to win the World Cup? To win the World Cup, follow the Moroccan model. Remove xenophobia. Remove xenophobia. You know, I'm just sick and tired of it. Honestly, I'm just sick and tired and disgusted and absolutely miffed and livid of persons in this country that have the audacity to call Mikel Antonio, Adrian Mariapa, Ravel Morrison, Leah Moore, Ethan Pinnock, Bobby Reed, Dylan Barnes, England rejects. Shame on you all. Shame on every single one of you. Because you're talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Go back to that Senegal team. Go back to that Morocco team of this tournament. Go back to the Germany team that won the 2014 title. And go look at their rosters. And when you analyze those rosters, let me hear you say that those players are Turkish rejects. Let me hear you say that those are French rejects. Let me hear you say that those are Dutch rejects. Because what Morocco showed us, despite Hakim Ziyech being born in the Netherlands, despite Bono being born in Canada, and the amount of French players in a Moroccan team, they all embrace them like their very own. So it's our turn now. It's our turn to embrace our own. It's time. That's right. It's time. And that's not something that you can, you can ignore. There's a lot of English Jamaicans that live in the New Jersey area. Yeah. East Coast, USA. East Coast, USA. East Coast, USA. East Coast, USA. All right. Just let it sink in. East Coast, USA. How does that sound? Well, I don't know what you guys have to say about that. <laughs> well, I'm compelled to hear what you guys have to say. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm quite eager to hear what you guys have to say. You know, it's a shame that we don't accept our own. And you have people in this country that say, Simon a thief, a local man, food. Absolute garbage. Garbage. Simon Preston thiefing a, a, a man, food. That is absolute rubbish. Frustrated, really. Yeah, man. And guess what? Is them is them same Monday that want to see Ladale Richie still play for Reggae Boys? Same, 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 same people. That's all right, you know. But what can you do? What can you say? What can you do? 
Well, what I'll say is this, folks. You see, in life, the best teams in the world are doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Only Saudi Arabia and Argentina carried squads at the World Cup that didn't have, you know. players born in outside that country, you know? So for me, what's up, <laughs> so That's how I feel. I don't know how you guys feel, but honestly, it's something that just completely f makes me get fed up. And I know it sounds like I've gone on a tangent, but that's just generally how I feel. Diaspora is the strongest in Minnesota. Okay, why Minnesota though? Why Minnesota? Is there why is the reason why that state in particular was chosen, or why is that? Big up credibility, boss. Seasons greetings from the North, Maji. Big big winter storm approaching here. Here listening and learning. Big up, smash the like button, people. Big up, Mr. Webster. Hope you and your family are doing well and everything of that nature. Thank you so much for for tuning in. I really really appreciate it. Simon, do you know when the Trinidad Schoolboy Champion going to play Jamaican Champion? It might be next year, you know. Very small amount of people in New York most go to Minnesota, Ohio, or Seattle, where their families are based already. I just want a bit of history lesson, though. I asked if there's a reason why they did that. Warren was a big up father of IMAX. <laughs> big up Prince B.S. Alan Cart. If we don't qualify for the we'll just delete the Football Federation. Let's just stop talking about it, please, because we, that's not going to happen. So I go win, or I go qualify. KN Sports TV says, big up, Simon. Big up. Hope you guys are doing well. What is your take on people who don't like overseas players, Simon? I think that those people are myopic. That's my honest opinion. You don't see Hakimi being called a Spanish reader by Moroccans. That's right. Simon, we need to promote our best all that represent our country, our football heroes. Thank you very much, my friend. I have to fully agree with you, Warren Webster. That is exactly the sort of mindset and view that we should have. Patrick Rice says, Simon, these people are not expected, exposed to the world of football, my friend. That is why they say these things. All right, completely understand. We just have weird, big, eager people with nothing to show. They just love to talk crap living in Jamaica. Yeah. I have met people, you know, but yeah, you're right, Sean. From Montreal, Toronto, Tri-State, Atlanta, Florida, Jamaicans call home. You're right. Hopefully the next generation of Dutch journeys come out and represent sir. Now, but let's see. Could I agree with you, sir? Darkness. Simon, you are not alone. You and JD is fighting for the overseas players to be in the team, says Ireland. All right. I think the best player should take the field. That's how I feel, honestly. I just feel the best team should take the field. It's a dream World Cup finals. Two countries. My dream World Cup final. England, Jamaica would be nice. I can't lose that day. England, Jamaica World Cup final would be nice. You remember in 1998 in Washington, D.C.? Woo! Was that the RFK Stadium? RFK Stadium in 97. That 1-1 one -one draw against USA where Paul Hall scored. Sorry, where Dion Burton scored. Woo-hoo! United States don't want to play Jamaica in Washington. Yeah. Jamaica can't make the top six. We must stop football. No cap. Alan Carter don't get it. <laughs> Simon, do you think any of the qualifiers will play in the States? Qualifiers? World Cup qualifiers? 
Only the U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico as U.S. territories could play their games within the states or Dominica if their stadium is not up to standard. Eddie Guna, big up. Big up my side. Before the war, some Somalis were in were in Minnesota for university or work, and after war, people knew there were a few there, and they wanted to be all together and help each other because they're new. Okay, thank you for the history lesson. I appreciate it. I'm, I like learning. Simon, suppose we don't get in East Coast venues. If we don't get East Coast venues, that means that Jamaican, then that means that we'll either be in the West Coast or the Central area. Now, if we if Jamaica does not get anything on the, the East Coast, then that means that leaves two areas, the central area or the western area. Now, as it relates to the central area, the central areas are Dallas, Houston, Kansas, Mexico City, and Monterey. Ideally, you'd want to have Jamaica in two areas, Dallas or Houston, ideally. Dallas or Houston. That's where you'd want. Dallas or Houston, because you do have Jamaican contingencies in those cities. So ideally, in those two areas. Kansas, it's not bad. You could take a flight up, easy peasy. Not a lot of Jamaicans in Kansas, but it's fine. If Jamaica is having a game in Monterey or Mexico City, take a flight from, from Dallas or Houston, and boom, boom, that's you. West Coast now. Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, Vancouver. If Jamaica doesn't get East Coast, then I would prefer West Coast. Why? Because you at least have a Jamaican base here in California. And you have Vancouver where you do have some Jamaicans as well. So... I think it's good. I think it's something that could work. So, yeah. I like looking at maps, guys. Did you guys know that in the past, people drew California as an island? If you guys want to hear that history lesson as to when in his human history California was an island, I'll let you guys know. And it's a pity that no games are in Hawaii. That would have been a nice trip. Games in Hawaii. Can you imagine flying to Hawaii for a game? Yeah, that would have been nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would have been nice. Hope this year I'm as well. They don't like to play Jamaica in DC. Yeah. But keep your comments coming in, folks. I'm eager to hear what you guys have to say. Let's see what you guys got to say. I'm looking forward to it. I look forward to it immensely. And hopefully... It's one that you guys will appreciate. Simon, do you follow local soccer? No, I follow local football. Yes. We might as well play our qualifying games in the States. We got no fans or passion from home. 
No, nah, man, trust me. So when qualifiers come around, we'll put those fans in the stands. Trust me. We'll fill up the stadium. Don't worry about that. So, just let that sink in. All right, folks? Good. If Jamaica go into the Copa America, how well do you think they'll do? It depends on the squad that is called up. It depends on the squad that is used. I think quarterfinals is realistic, but I think further with that would be a stretch. So that's why I look at things. But let me hear what you guys have to say. I'm eager to hear what you guys have to say. I'm looking forward to it. What if Jamaica ends up playing all their games in Mexico? Highly unlikely. You won't have three games in Mexico. Why? Because if you look at the host cities, in Mexico, you have three host cities, Guadalajara, Mexico City, and Monterrey. It's highly unlikely that Jamaica will have all three games within Mexico. Highly, highly unlikely. Like there's a 0% chance of that happening. Just being completely frank. All group games will not be in one city or one area. There will be a little bit of traveling. Freedom blog at Cesar Simon. Let's focus on getting to the World Cup first. There is a lot of us in the USA to fill up the stadiums. It's not going to be easy, easy to qualify. I know it's not going to be easy to qualify, but I need to show you the endless possibilities of what can happen if, when the team gets over the line. Why are we talking about venues? We'll probably play or like to play when we have not made the World Cup in over 20 years. I guess good topics are scarce nowadays. Well, KS, I don't know if you are a pessimistic person, but I'm an optimistic person. And I'm not sure if you did philosophy in school or theory of knowledge, but I think it's imperative that you look up and read about values and you exactly see where I'm coming from here. And so the are looking players hard and Dominican Republic, Dominican Republic. Why we no longer strive for being the best and settle for mediocrity? Why we have to apologize for wanting the best done spasness at takeover? Hmm. I look at maps for a career. You look at maps for a career. Nice. Nice, Eddie. So I'll do the California thing quite soon for you guys. Sir John, how are you doing? I hope you're doing good. Yeah, I'm doing well. Father one up to Jamaica is a bad mind place, you know. It's a bad mind. You're the best of them. Flying to Hawaii around 15 hours. That's not good mentally and physically. No, from California, it's five, six hours. So it's not 15 hours. In fact, half of the US is green because that area gets more rainfall and is more populated as a result. Hmm. Interesting. Rico Lewis. Copa America will we will get smacked? I don't think smacked. Really hope we actually qualify. It won't be easy. Nitro says up. What does Antonio International future hold in your opinion? I think he'll be part of the Gold Cup squad after that if he can keep himself mentally fit and physically fit. Who knows? Maybe even the qualifiers. Simon, can you tell us the players in England the new coach can tap so far? <laughs> the name Texas, name of Jamaica after him. I know Tejas, that's what it was formerly called. So funny math, history, and geography were my strongest subjects in high school. 
I love sociology in college, tourism and hotel management with my major Simon. I love maps too, bro. Great. I'm, I'm glad that you like maps too, so I'll get to the point soon. Simon, is the new coach reaching out to players in England or is he just working with who is there? No, he has not made direct contact with, with everybody, Chris. So guys, back in the 15th century, California was mapped as it is right now. But a century later, and for two centuries, California was mapped out as an island. You know why? Hernan Cortez was doing his voyage and they're mapping out the Gulf of California. And there was this romance novel at the time where there was an island like Atlantis, a mythical island called California. It's not a real place. And they said that the island is to the east of the Indies. So the Indies is over here, you guys, as you guys know. East of the Indies, as I said, in, inhabited by only women, black women with large, robust bodies. And Cortez got some message that he was actually to the right of the Indies and basically called this place the Gulf of California. He thought it was an island, kept mapping and mapping and mapping, and he realized it wasn't an island. But that was that. And then another guy came, and he was a Catholic priest, and he interpreted all of this as an island. And for two centuries, California was drawn like an island. It's funny because if you look at research, they'll tell you that maybe one of the reasons why they thought California was an island was because in that time frame, there was a lot of flooding in this area in particular. And there was a lot of water in this area. So that is why voyagers and, and, and navigators and discoverers would view this area as an island. Because the water that you're seeing here, they saw water in this area as well. So I think that they presumed that it was an island. But over time, the water cleared up in these areas. And California was no longer mapped as an island. I think it's one of the biggest mistakes ever made in human history. Hmm. One of those things, eh? You know? One of those things in particular. Will Blake be available for 2026? Yes. Chevron Peter Simon, you're watching Johnny Harris. I do watch his videos, actually. I do watch his videos, and I, and I really do appreciate his content, Chevron Peart. Honestly, Simon, what five players should we bring in our team for 2026? Max Aarons, Levi Caldwell, John Russell, Mason Holgate, and Ivan Tony. I saw the interview you and the co the coach's desk had a year ago with Marlon King before the qualifiers. The issues remain. Wow. <laughs> Wasn't Cali part of Mexico? Yes, it was. It was part of Mexico because the United States was not a country that was coast to coast at the time. It's actually an interesting story how Texas is part of the United States because all of this area that is Texas was originally part of Mexico. So Mexico needed money and they said to the US, let's, let's, we're going to rent our land and you can come here. But what happened was the United States people came here and basically they came up to our own here and they came over the land. So they came into Mexican soil and basically said, there's a particular area that you can't cross. The Americans crossed that land and they disobeyed. And by doing that, basically what happened was you had the Mexican-American War, USA won convincingly, claimed this land, claimed Oregon, claimed San Francisco, claimed California. And the truth is that the United States, with its power, could have claimed more of Mexican land. But it was argued in Congress at the time that the United States should not claim this land in particular because they didn't want the United States' population to mix with the indigenous and Indian population of Mexico. So quite naturally, the United States could have claimed more land, even up to Guadalajara. 
but it was argued against getting all of this land because they didn't want the United States population at that time to be mixed race. So they just said, let us get land that white people can inhabit instead of going into land which is dominated by non-white people. I hope that helps. So Simon, it's a joke thing because if I am coaching the team, the first thing I would do is try to approach the players that can fit my system that can play for Jamaica. Chris, it takes time and the coach just got back from Qatar. And at this point in time, his priority is to think about the two matches that he had and about the, the opponents that Jamaica has had against in CONCACAF. I mean, in the friendly matches, Argentina and Cameroon. With that being out of the way, the attention will now switch to another direction. And that attention will now be going in the direction of preparing for a Gold Cup and beyond. That is where the next attention will lie. So that is the situation there. Exciting times ahead. That is what I'll say. I think that there's every reason of optimism why Jamaicans should be for this tournament in particular. Once up at a time, Chris. Once up at a time. That is what I'll say for now. Remember, for now, it is about ensuring that everything falls into place. All right. Hope that makes sense. Good. To win, Simon, to keep the detractors quiet. Good point. Simon, if he thinks that that what we have can qualify, I don't think. Chris, relax, relax, take a chill pill. The squad that we had against Argentina, the squad we had against Cameroon, is not necessarily the squad we're going to have in the qualifiers. Simon, did you know that the, that you know, the new maps are not in true proportions? They make North America and Europe bigger than South America and Africa. Really? The current maps you're talking about? Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that information. I really, really appreciate it. That, my friend, is rather interesting. Hmm. Hmm. If you look at the continents of the world by size, right? Asia is the largest, followed by Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe, and Australia. And if we're going to look at population, no. Asia, Africa, same, North America, South America. We know Europe follows because Antarctica doesn't have people that live there. It's just about like research shows and stuff. I'm trying to think of people that were actually born there, like actually born in Antarctica. I'm sure you have, you have hospitals and stuff in Antarctica, but people that was born in Antarctica. But I know somebody in the 1970s was born there. What do you think of the West Indies national team if they made a team? No. Simon, I see you did several history classes at UE. You know, I didn't actually. I didn't do history at UE. At UE, I did broadcasting, sports analysis, data analytics, and I did French. Yeah. That extra hopes of Simon teaching USA history. <laughs> I, I guess it's a passion of mine, I guess. 
Seriously. I haven't told him Mason Greenwood at exciting times. Yet. Mason Greenwood. Bro, we got to chill on that. Simon, do you think Jamaica can win the Nations? They can. If we can beat Mexico, then yes, Jamaica can win the Nations League. 155 million percent, yes. Hutchinson, Gray, Greenwood, Holgate, Boyce Clark. Good players, eh? Very, very good players. Back in the day, the Argentine government getting people to be born on Antarctica. Yeah. I think the guy's name was Emilio. What's the guy's name? Emilio Palma. Emilio Palma was born there. I think the first person that was born there was a Norwegian, Solveig Jakobsen. Yeah. Spent like most of his life there. Interesting, somebody being born in Antarctica. Looking to see what style Halgrims will eventually focus on. 4-4-2, 4-3-3. I'll do a video on it. All right, guys. Where is the true equator? Where is the true equator runs to Ecuador? Now puts that into perspective. Equator, right. Runs through Ecuador. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. Simon, do you think Grimm will develop a style of play like Morocco in the World Cup? Not the exact verbatim style of play, but he will develop a style of play. Yes. Ivan Tony is going to prison or get banned. Probably get a slap under his. True equator, likely through Ecuador. Yeah, it is. It is. Ready for controversy? Javain Broder, Ethan Laird? Ethan Laird. Why would that be a controversy? Everybody knows my how much I rate Ethan Laird. And I've been a big fan of Trivas Trigger, which is Javain Brown since 2017. Everybody is aware of that as well. When you look at Ethan Laird, 19 games, a goal to assist to his credit. Doing absolutely brilliant at QPR right now. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant, brilliant things. You know what I'm saying? Brilliant things and exciting times ahead. Yeah. Cameron says, if you look at New Zealand and Australia, you see they're not the closest countries to each other. It's actually your French overseas territory that's the closest to New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. All gates are low. Damien Low. But that doesn't mean I wouldn't want Mason Holgate as a reggae boy. But Damien Lowe right now. Keep the questions coming, Nitro. Hmm. And you guys know France's longest border with a country is with Brazil. Yep, right here. It's funny that all of this used to be Guyana. French Guyana. Dutch Guyana. British Guyana. Spanish Guyana. Portuguese Guyana. All of this used to be Guyana. Can you imagine if there were one country? Powerhouse.
Litem, Guyana. So you can literally drive from Guyana to get to Brazil. Hmm. Valparaiso. Colombia. Ah, what a day. Simon, do you believe in aliens? No, but I believe that you have demons in the world. Yes, but not aliens. If Mason Greenwood never went to jail, do you think Liam would start in Jamaica team? Liam? Which Liam is that? Liam? Liam? South America and Africa is much longer, wouldn't it seem? Seem so? Use your eye test. It looks that way. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Ty Mitchell Arika Henry. Right, right now. Mitchell. Yeah, you can drive from Guyana to Brazil and also from French Guyana. Yeah, let him. Yeah. Has Lambert played for the new coach, Kevin Lambert? No, he hasn't. I mean, and he didn't go to jail. Do you think Mason Green would start for Jamaica? Absolutely. Yeah, that was how South America was. In fact, the country of Granada included Venezuela, Colombia, and Ecuador. Yeah, El Gran, Gran Hero. Do you know Colombia? And Venezuela used to be a country called Gran Colombia, with parts of Panama as well. Used to be called Gran Colombia. And of course, you had the war and stuff like that. And it's interesting because the border here is not a hard and fast border. Similar to the border here, because the border here is not a hard and fast border as well. So... This is not a hard and fast board as well. So persons could take the train from Belfast and go all the way down to Dublin. Or they could go to Bray or Limerick or Galway or Cork or Kinsale or Waterford or Wexford. And then you start talking like the Irish and then you end up in Westport and Bellina, and Sligo, and Donegal, and Exkillen, Belfast, and Bray, and Dundalk. Yeah. What do you think should be the level of our government involvement in our football, sir? It should be bigger than it is because the... Um, it hurts me, sorry guys. Uh, uh, Porsche Simpson Miller was at all of Jamaica's games, home and away. Greeted the team at the airport upon arrival back to the island from trips. And uh, as I said, if you look at our current sports minister, she greets track and field members, but she wasn't there when our rugby team qualified for the World Cup, wasn't there when our lacrosse team qualified for the World Cup, men and women, and wasn't there as well when our rugby sevens and also league teams qualified for the World Cup. And I could literally go on and on and on and on and on and on. So I do think that sports need to be treated as an industry and not as a recreation. I know there was an interview done earlier this year in relation to funding that goes to football. Funding is one factor, but moral support is another factor as well that needs to be greatly analyzed and considered as well. You can say that you're putting in the most money into football, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it is going. I can give you $100. But what you do with that $100 is a different conversation altogether. Mason Greenwood would have been to the World Cup for England when he's injured free. Well, he wasn't injured. When does MLS return? March. Ecuador, Colombia, Panama, Venezuela used to be Gran Colombia. Would love to see Jamaica under-21 team playing during FIFA windows. 
Yeah, if we had a budget, my friend, it would have happened. If we had a budget, it would have been a reality. I'm telling you right now. It would have. So Panama has two Independence Days, one from Gran Colombia and the other from Spain. Interesting point. I did not know that, to be honest with you. That is something that I did not know at all. So thank you for sharing that point. I really, really appreciate that. So, interesting. So, yeah. So, interesting points. Very, very interesting points. On around February 25, should see the return of MLS. Yeah. We keep using yard poor economy as an excuse for lack of progress. Argentina has a collapsed economy and won the World Cup. And guess what? No that no division. This light. No division. Peace, unity, togetherness. That is what is evident in that country. So let that be an example to all. Let that be an example. Let that be an example. Argentina has over 40% unemployment and 100% inflation. <laughs> you guys should go to, yeah, go there and see. So adversity is temporary. So don't ever let this be an excuse or let's never ever use it as an excuse ever. So yeah. As a Jamaican New Zealander, yeah, the club in New Zealand, semi-professional founded by immigrants from the Caribbean. Simon, do you think the JFF will use the Adidas money to build a new stadium? No, I don't think the money will be used to build a new stadium. I think you will help with the runnings of the national team, also assist in terms of the head coach and his remuneration package. And I also think that the funds will go as well towards preparation for future matches and competitions. Has Anil Fisher found a club yet since he left Minnesota, Simon? Well, as it relates to Anil Fisher specifically, I know many persons have been speaking about his sort of movement and involvement. And the reality of the situation is no. No club just yet. Important to show moral support to promote support. Let's get our children out of the dance halls and back on the playing fields. Yep. Sean, do you guys have any players coming in? Yeah, that's right. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Really, really appreciate it. Every single one of you guys are legends. There's more content to come. If you guys haven't already, smash that like button. Smash that like button right, right now. Let me know what your thoughts are, right, guys. Smash that like button right now. Let's hear what you guys have to say. The government could turn over the Greenfield Stadium to the JFF. Could, but I don't see it happening because that field needs a tremendous amounts of maintenance work. So honestly, I just don't see that happening. And bearing in mind, you do have other sporting disciplines that would love to use that field like rugby, like lacrosse, like floorball. So I don't see it happening. In Jamaica World Stadium, Jamaica, Jamaica, you see every sports without the team. One could walk travel from Panama into Colombia. I didn't know, Darian Gap, okay. Simon, I mentioned Alvas or Fisher name, please. I'm answering a question. Smash the like button, guys. Before you go, smash the like button, guys. 
Smash the like button. All right, guys. More videos to come. Stay tuned. One love. Take it easy. Be safe. Guys, smash the like button right now. Cool breeze. This video is brought to you by MPEC Printery, specializing in t-shirt printing, posters, and shipping from the USA. Call 876-775-6692 or 876-337-7374. Andy Gone Nuts, 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mmm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. This video is also brought to you by BLC Jamaica Security Electronics. Specializing in alarm system, video surveillance, camera system or CCTV, barrier system, gate automation, and access control. Call 876-320-7711. That's 876-320-7711. Or 876-351-1105. That's 876-351-1105.